Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 Uh-huh. I said, uh-huh. I sure will. A good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. I feel it's necessary to explain what I say in the morning because somebody asked me, what do you mean by that when you say that in the morning? When I say, uh-huh, it's in response to David Hollister opening the song by saying, go ahead, Big Daddy. Go ahead. I said, "Uh uh-huh, I sure will. Then I say, good morning, everybody, because I was raised that way. You're supposed to speak when you come in the room. I'm coming in y'all's room, whether it's your bedroom, the room in your house, your car, your office, you know, wherever you're at. I come in the room, I got to speak, so I say, good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice, and then I got to introduce myself because as a performer, I always felt my best when I was introduced. It's, no, why would you walk out on stage and anybody introduce you? You don't, you can't get the, a round of applause. It's just, it's horrible. So I say, you are listening to the voice, one and only Steve Harvey. Come on, dig me now. Now that's old school. I got that, but that's I was once again, dig me now. Is I want you to feel what I'm about to say. That's all I'm saying. I'm, that's not a bragging thing, you know. Y'all listening to the voice, one and only Steve Harvey. Come on, dig me now. I'm just asking you to feel what I'm saying in the morning because it's part of a promise that I made to God. See, a long time ago, I told God if he allowed me to make it, that when I got there, I would tell everybody I know how I did it. And I wasn't going to shortcut it or shade him on it. I said, if you allow me to make it, if you give me the strength, the courage, the wisdom, You gave me a gift if you let me apply it. Don't destroy myself in the process. Forgive me for my sins along the way. Continue to hold and rock me when I need it. When I make it, I promise you, Lord, when I get there, I will tell everybody how I made it. Well, this started back in L.A. when I got on the radio. And uh, I was making it okay. I was doing okay. But I had to keep my promise to God. My promise was, if you allow me to make it, I'll tell everybody how I got there. I have to tell you that every day. Because if it was not for that grace and mercy, I wouldn't even be here able to fulfill my promise. Because I've done enough dirt in my life, man, to not be worthy. He could have easily walked away from me a long time ago. Because I had sure walked away from him. 
See, and I didn't walk away from him once. I walked away from him a bunch of times. But guess what? He forgave me a bunch of times. I'm a living example of hundreds of chances. His forgiveness and his mercy is available for everybody. It's the only reason I get on this show every day. It's the only reason I have the blessings that's coming my way. It's the only way that the things that keep happening in my life, man, that I have no explanation for is because of his grace and mercy. See, anytime something good happens in my life and I can't explain it, that's usually him. He exhibits to me, remember, I'm a forgiving God, man. Remember. So when you fall, Steve, don't lay down there. Don't you lay down there. Don't you let the devil fool you that because you done made some mistakes that you ain't that you can't do it. Because everybody going to make them. There's none perfect, no, not one. So get up. Keep moving. Keep pushing. Step on. What you laying there for? Your daddy didn't raise you that way. Look, man, my father was just about manhood. I'm going to just tell you, my daddy never had a conversation with me about church. He beat me for not going, but, you know, a couple times, but he wasn't about that, wasn't his message. That was my mama's job. My mama taught me about being saved, about loving the Lord, about giving your life, about the, the teachings of Jesus Christ. My mama was a Sunday school teacher, so I got all of that from her. My old man ain't had none of that for me. My old man talked to me about one thing all day long, hard work and manhood. And well, you're going to get that if you don't get nothing else from me. He gave that to me. So I got it. See, so my father, you say, excuse my language, but you ain't going to sit there like no little punk up in here. You ain't, that ain't what you finna do. You finna get up and go do what you supposed to do. Now stop all that whining like some little punk and go on and get to moving. That's how my father talked to me. Now I'm just telling you real. It worked for me, though. And, and before you start emailing me, that had nothing to do with homosexuality at all. It's just that was his term for a man not acting like a man. That's all it was. It, it, had, it was not a gay reference at all. I want you to understand that before you start emailing me. So my daddy wasn't calling. That was not a sexual reference for him. My father talked to us. That's what he meant. I knew exactly what he meant. He couldn't have meant nothing else. He didn't even know nothing about that. My old man clueless when it come to that right there. So... When I was getting down and feeling bad about myself, my old man, he taught me this toughness, man. He gave me this grit, this doggedness, this go to work and work hard. That's why today when God does bless me with something, he ain't got to worry about me not working hard. Because that's in me. And when I get tired, I ask that same God for strength to keep on doing so I can do the blessings he got for me. So when you ask me, how you going to do all this, Steve Harvey? I don't know. I ain't got to figure that out. All I got to do is show up with the same amount of faith I've been showing up with. God handled the rest of it. See, y'all, <laughs> hey, hey, man, let me tell you something. I don't see how you do it. I don't either. Can I, can I give you, hey, man, news flash. Let me hear, I don't see how you doing all that, Steve. You doing this, you doing that, you doing that. Can I tell you something? I don't either. I just wake up with the faith, man, and trusting that if he going to bless me with it, he must be going to show me a way how to get it done. See, I ain't tripping on that part. See, I, once you take yourself out the how-to business, you can go on and get with it. But see, if you're going to trip yourself out with the how-to, you can't think like God can think. You can't figure like God can figure. So now you sitting up in here going, Lord, I want this to happen for me. Then I don't know how I'm going to do all that. Well, guess what? You in the way now. See, you now you in the way. Because, see, God ain't asked you to figure out how to. He said, ask and believe. Then he said, faith without works is dead. That's my solution. That's the concoction that I'm functioning on. All I got to do is accept the blessing, keep the faith, be willing to work and believe. God can do anything but fail. Why would God bring me this far to leave me? Why would he bring you this far to leave you? So why I get up every morning? I have no choice. I got to get up in here and rest. When I'm running late, man, I try to plow through here. Sometimes I don't make it, man. I got to do a rerun, but I plow through here. Because, man, Steve, you're going to run out of something to say. No, nah, I'm going to just keep thanking him. Now, you can't run out of that, can you? Because you owe him that. Matter of fact, when I get through talking, I really ain't thanked him enough. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the ride. This is the greatest morning show on planet Earth in all of the free world. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Now, because of the uh, actions of the rioters and uh, uh, terrorists, we haven't had a chance to properly thank the following people. So let me begin by doing this. Excuse me for a moment, my uh, team of wonderful, wonderful cast members. But I wanted to say today a special thank you to all of you in the state of Georgia that showed up in numbers, that showed up and defied the odds and turned an election around for the betterment of this country and an opportunity to right the ship that has gone astray. Congratulations to the brothers and sisters who registered and voted for everybody who voted down there in the state of Georgia for just a better opportunity. Congratulations to uh, new Senator Raphael Warnock and new Senator John Ossoff. Congratulations. I would like to thank Kelly Leffler for being at least gracious in it. Uh, David Perdue, not so much. He's uh, hurt. He's going hunting, and he's thinking about uh, doing something. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what they do a lot of times. They don't show feel up good. They go hunting because they start thinking about something. Yeah, about his yeah. 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 But uh, <laughs> that's it. On. So congratulations to uh, 107.5, 97.5 down in Atlanta, Georgia, showing up like that. Magic. I know it was yeah, y'all. Magic. I also mm-hmm. want to thank my fraternity brothers, Ricky Smiley and uh, D.L. Hughley, for, for hopping in and lending a hand also. We collaborated on this, man, which shows when, when we get together and make a decision, we can make a difference. So now for everybody that didn't think Black Lives Matter, I bet you think they matter now. Black Lives Matter because black lives are now voting, and black lives are now requiring a different look at us. Voter suppression will no longer work because we will no longer be suppressed. Our vote matters, it makes a difference, and it changes things. And we just proved it. And congratulations to all of you who decided to make a change. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Strawberry. I echo those sentiments, Steve Harvey. Good morning. Happy Friday. The fabulous one, Carla Pharrell. Good morning. What's up, crew? Happy Friday. That ever-present voice of reason, Junior Kill Spates. Morning, everybody. Morning, Unc. Thank you, G.A. Now, Nephew Tommy's here, but he's got some technical difficulties. But he is here. But you know how technical can be. And Lord Jesus, do I know. So it, it is. He's experiencing yes. some tef- technical difficulty. He'll be with us shortly, but Lord have mercy. It happens every once Sometimes in a while on Zoom. Technology is too damn technical. <laughs> it's wonderful Boy, when it works, yeah. but when it doesn't. Work it? Uh-huh. Did y'all Damn. see that what? sorry president? Yes, yes. Lord. Did yes. you hear that? Way uh, too late ass speech last night. Yeah. I'm uh-huh. saying, I'm well, saying. Well, your ass ain't trying to stay out of jail, <laughs> but you got to go, partner. All right, uh, coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, today's headlines and more. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so here's some breaking news. Um, a Capitol Police officer injured at the riot on uh, Wednesday has died, bringing the death toll to five now in the wake of Wednesday's riot of pro-Trump domestic terrorists storming the Capitol with little visible police resistance. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund is resigning. Sund's resignation came not long after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi demanded a change at the top. Again, we all saw on social media Some of the Capitol Police officers let the domestic terrorists into the Capitol building. They took selfies with them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, They escorted them out nicely. Well, take a listen to one of the protesters talking about the cops. Yeah, we went in there, and then I walked in, and there's just a whole bunch of people laying up in some Oregon room. I don't know if it's an Oregon, just tons of Oregon paintings, but they were smoking a bunch of weed in there. And uh, then we moved it down. So many statues. Cops are very cool. They're like, hey, guys, have a good night. And we'll summon them. It's just crazy. It's really weird. You can see that some of them are on our side. Wow. That's crazy. Whoa. Right there. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, we saw it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Y'all getting uh, high. It's unbelievable. It, it really is. I don't, it really, I really is. 
I don't. But when he said know. the cops were on his side, on their side. side. Well, who, who was he saying was smoking a lot of weed? Who was he, he referring was, to? He was. He didn't say specifically. He was on CNN. He That's the that. news source of the audio. Mm-hmm. He didn't specifically say to the reporter who was smoking weed. I know. But the fact but, that the cooperation of the cops that he was saying. Well, was but smoking. you know yeah, what though? The if they don't make an example mm-hmm. of these people, and I mean, like, I mean, look. Well, do you really expect them to though? Honestly, Steve. Yes, I, mean, I do. I yes, do. I really I do expect, expect it. But to. is it going to happen? Yeah. And I think it has to because. You had, first of all, this fear was a bipartisan fear. See, when you got, mm-hmm. listen to me, man. Democrats once and you, Republicans. Yeah, yeah. once Working you together. have women laying on the floor in fear, you have to do something. You have well, to react to that just as a decent ass man. But then when you got men curled up next to them with their ass, and do you know that people were writing home saying, calling their loved ones, telling them goodbye? Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, man, wow. you know, listen, wow. man, no. th- something has to happen here. And I'm yeah. telling you, this new AG that's in that that, that got put in, oh, I'm Mary telling you, Garland. man, mm-hmm. listen to me. It takes mm-hmm. weeks sometimes, but they're going to get on that camera and they're going to make an example out of some of these people. Some of them are already in court, and they're also looking at the president for his role in ex- in as inciting it. As they should. As they should. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, that's yeah. the one that's shaky. But, yeah. and you know, he's, he's having corporate. secret meetings right now talking about pardons and stuff. Mm-hmm. What can he pardon himself for and things like that. But we, we, eventually, this is going to get broken down to the state level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because what you did was a federal offense, but you can't pardon your... It's, First of all, you can't pardon yourself without charges, mm-hmm. from what I understand. Okay, there has to be so. some charges before you can pardon yourself. Yeah, it's like pardon you for what? Right. And, so and you since, want to since for people what? died, you isn't, isn't it accessible to murder? Tommy, that Accessory. really oh heightened God, the problem. That. That's why this too late lying apology. ass apology he made last night, mm-hmm. that was the worst you know, trying to be presidential now. Mm. You know, too late. Too late. It's too late. Too little. Way too late. Too late. Too late. Everybody Four years, that went too down late. there, years, the looters and, the, right, and the rioters, yeah. you will be punished by law for breaking the law. You will be punished. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Excuse me, dude. Right after they did it, go home in peace. We love you. We understand how you feel. That you said that same thing about these people that you sent down there. Then you turn around last night and you want to reverse it because now you see you in trouble. Because mm-hmm. now you got these this blood on your hand and these deaths. And now you want to turn around and try to be presidential. I really appreciate what Biden said about him. I mean, Biden lit him, man. Oh, yeah. He and did. called it he like did. it was. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. now that he's certified, Biden took them gloves mm-hmm. off. And, you know, he's, he's still <laughs> Joe now. Yes. <laughs> Uncle Joe with the <laughs> aviator Yeah, we saw some glimpses of Joe. You're yeah, right, Joe. yesterday, yeah. <laughs> All right, and so um, in other news, the calls to remove Donald Trump from office are growing louder and louder in the wake of Wednesday's chaotic scene at the Capitol at the hands of Trump supporters uh, and the rioters. More than 200 members of Congress, mostly Democrats, are calling for Trump to be removed from office. It is unclear if Vice President Pence would support such a move. So far, I well, think they're saying he's wavering. He's going to pose. Yeah. First of all, the 25th Amendment has to be accomplished, according to what I've been learning, by his cabinet members and the vice president. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His right. cabinet members and the vice president, according to the 25th Amendment, have to say he's unfit to hold office. If that doesn't work, Nancy Pelosi says she's going to rev up a very quick impeachment, impeachment. trial that mm-hmm. could come up in two days. Problem with that is... And the reason I don't like that route is because if enough of them senators don't do that again, because you need two thirds for mm-hmm. impeachment, right? Mm. Well, she's gonna get it done in the House because she did it before, and then it right. has to go to the Senate. What you're saying, Steve. but when you go and to the she Senate, was hesitant before. Yeah, even even though now. we control the Senate now, they haven't been sworn in yet. I don't. Right. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, right. So just and so there. I don't think we can get, even though they know he wrong. I don't yeah. think we can get two thirds of the Senate to go along with impeachment. And, and so the, once again, he would slip through the net and become Teflon Don, and would yeah. further embrace mm-hmm. it. 
losing his uh, followers. Like, he's the greatest. Look, they tried to get him twice, and they yeah. didn't get him. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes, Steve. That's exactly right. accurate. And and then they're yeah. also saying that they don't want to do that. Another school of thought is, is because it will further divide the country. And what Joe Biden is trying to do is bring us together. You know, if we right. if we go ahead and impeach that. him. We're yeah, I understand that. We're already divided. But they don't have the yeah, power. We're so and divided. We can't give them the power. If he, yeah. well, we want to be divided from him, though. That we <laughs> yeah. want. You want yeah. there are a lot that don't. There's from 70 him. million that don't. You know what? The, we've been divided. It's just yeah. he made it highly visible. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And that's that's the mm. problem with this guy. But I, we got it. All right. Uh, coming up next, the nephew with Run That Prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In entertainment news, um, O.J. Simpson, Steve, spoke out yesterday about the attack on Capitol Hill. Uh, last what? Be talking about some <laughs> yeah, O.J. <laughs> be well, quiet, O.J. What'd he say? We'll tell you. We'll tell you. It's coming up. And uh, Soho Karen, you know her, the cell phone attacker. Uh, well, she's been arrested. That's good, good news. And we'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, the nephew is in the building with Run That Prank Back. What you got for us, Nat? Christmas light expiration. Christmas light expiration. You know, they all have an expiration. To all you people out there that still got your lights on the house, there is an expiration, okay? All right. Somewhere <laughs> right second week in January, we need to see some ladders, all right, moving around, getting them <laughs> off the house. Take a listen. Let's go, Cat. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, James. Yeah? Hey, James, how you doing? Uh, this is Greg. I'm one of your neighbors. I live a few streets over from you. How you doing today? Um, I'm doing fine. What's up? Just want to make sure I got the right person. You at um, 6 uh, North Willow Bend? Yeah. Okay. Why are okay. you calling me, man? What's up? What's okay. Up? I'm on, I live on Shadow Bend, man. My name is Greg, and um, I want to I want to reach out to you. Uh, we seem to have a bit of a problem, man. You still have your Christmas lights up on the house, and yeah. what what what's what's going on? You know, we you know some of the neighbors have had a conversation. When are you gonna take these down? Man, we go through this every year, and uh, it ain't no problem, man. The, the lights are gonna stay up. Hold on, hold on. What 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 do you mean they're gonna stay up? Did I stutter? I said the lights are going to stay up, you know. No, I go no, no. Hold, hold on, bro. Christmas is over. The lights ain't finna stay up, okay? I don't give I'm, a I'm trying give to a call you nicely and tell you that the lights need to come down. You know, I don't, I don't even, why do you have your lights up after Christmas? Santa Claus, the, the whole Christmas thing is over. Wait, wait, wait a minute, man. What, what's your name again? Greg who? Of the my name, my name is Greg. My name is Greg, and I live on Shadow Bend. I live four streets over from you. I don't give a f- about where you live, man. You know, okay. how'd you get my number? I got your number from the HOA. You know, the president of HOA. Aunt Alan, the one gave me your number. But that, but Alan. that's neither that's neither here nor there. The, the, the big issue is these Christmas lights just got to come down. <laughs> you sound like a joke, man. You sound like a guy <laughs> fool. What? What? You 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 gonna take my Christmas like you know I keep those lights up you know why I keep those lights up I'm listening my mama loves those lights she's she keeps the lights up a little bit longer than usual but we don't give a f- about that as long as she's happy so okay okay you know, okay let me let me let me, let me, let me, this, let me say this I, I'm hearing you with your mama I understand that you know you got love for your mom cool. But check this out. The whole neighborhood wants your lights down. So I'm going to tell you this right here from neighbor to neighbor. You got to tomorrow evening to take them lights down. If not, I'm going to take them down my damn self. What okay? time are you coming, bro? What time are you coming? Okay. I'll tell you what. I get off at 5. I'll be at your house by 6 to take these damn lights down if you're not Hey, I'll be down. looking for you, too, man. You know, we got a big family. I'm going to call my brother, and we're going to meet you. We're going to meet you because you ain't okay. taking down. You understand okay. what I'm saying? They're, 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 the they're, lights are going to stay up, bro. Okay. I don't care if you and your mama got to take them damn lights down. Hold up, brother. What you say about my mama? I said you and your mama can take them lights down, but somebody got to take them down. Mother you talking about my mom. We ain't taking down Where did you say you live? I live on Shadow Bend. I'm on Shadow Bend. I'm on Shadow Bend. Hey, Shadow man, Bend. you just... You trying to you trying to sign your death sentence? If you come over 
to my crib and talk about taking down our mother Christmas lights. F*** you, man. F*** hey, you. If I come over there and you and your mama ain't on the ladder trying to get them lights off that house, then I'm taking them down. Hey, man, you you talking about my mama taking down the f- light? I've got a f- baseball bat for your mother f- and everybody at the HOA. I, AO, I don't. Everybody at that f- club you in or whatever the HOA or whatever. I'm f- you up, mother. F- I'm f- you up. Okay, well if you if you, if you f- me up, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to f- tie me up too. He's the one. To, he's the one told us you had the lights on the house and hadn't taken them down. Tommy the one. Tommy. Uh, who? Tommy and you. Can you get over here right now? I I, I can come. I tell you what. I come through there. Me and Tommy both will come through there. If that's what you want. Come on, mother. Your. You silly. Okay. So so can I say something? Else? So what, mother? Can I can I say one more thing to you? Man, you ain't got to say. You say that when you get over here. You talking about my mama, man? Okay, I, hey, 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 calm down, dude. Calm down. Yeah. Okay. Calm down about oh. what? Okay, okay. Can I can I can I say something else? Can I say one more thing? Just just, just one more thing. What? All I'm gonna say is this nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Did you say? Oh, you you got to be kidding me, man. <laughs> This is f***ed up. <laughs> man. <laughs> you got it. James, you all right, man? No, man, I ain't all right, man. What? You got my blood pressure up. What? <laughs> hey, listen. Wow. Listen, hey, 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 James, you got some neighbors, Russell and Shanice. Russell and Shanice, they are the ones that got me to prank call you, man. I got it, they ain't gonna get no Christmas present for me next year. You that's for sure. That's some bullshit, man. Wow. Oh, you was heated, boy. Oh man. You was heated, man. Oh, one thing I do you, know about you, James. You love your mama, don't you? I love I love her to death, man. You 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 had to take it there. That that shit ain't right, man. <laughs> You got to let me know, man, what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land. Let me hear it. Oh, God. The Steve Harvey fucking <laughs> morning show, man. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You know, number one stupid in the world, baby. But tonight, I will not be stupid. Ready to love, last resort. You do not want to miss it on the Woo! own network, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Catch your boy hosting the whole doggone thing. Ready to love. Last Resort, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, only on OWN. Yeah. My right, show. I, I will be watching. Oh right, Carla? <laughs> yes, girl. We're going to text each other. Yeah. Yeah. Great show, Tommy. <laughs> on, the, on this next break, I want mm-hmm. all of our listeners to pay attention. I'm going to give you a uh, Instagram site to go to. I want to draw some attention to what happened to this young sister walking home two blocks from her uh, from the L.A. City Hall, walking home and ran into a, a Stop the Steal mega Trump rally. And what happened to this young black woman was appalling. And I'm going to draw attention to this, and we're going to get some We're going to get results. We're going to get some done for this. Sister. Yes, sir. All right. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, so you had a story you wanted to bring hey, to our attention out of Los listen, Angeles, out of L.A. Uh, some, some, some young folks that work for me brought uh, to my attention. There is a Instagram site called Rock My World Rocky. Rock My World Rocky. Mm-hmm. It's a post about what happened to this young uh, sister in downtown Los Angeles, uh, two blocks away from the L.A. City Hall where she was walking past a Stop the Steal MAGA rally. You know, the Stop the Steal Mm -hmm. is what they call this campaign. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was walking through the crowd, and the unmasked supporters, they began to yell, asking her if she had voted for Trump. Now, the sister was on the phone, said no, flipped them off, and kept walking, talking on the phone. Then a mob of 20 Trump protesters, supporters, 
circled her, began screaming in her face, pushing her between each other. One woman reached over, tore off her wig while calling her the N-word B. Men holding flagpoles began beating this woman, her, alongside and who were punching her. And then a Trump supporter grabbed her from behind, restricting her ability to defend herself. That was later on reported that he was trying to pull her out and help her. That's what was later on reported. They got this guy's name and picture. But as he was holding her, they walked up and they sprayed this woman with mace dead in her face. In her eyes, yeah. And now this woman is sitting there. She can't do nothing. She can't see. Now they filming this. Some people behind the police barricades. The police didn't do nothing. They got over the barricade, went and got the woman, and pulled her to safety. Now, on, on this site, Rock My World Rocky, if you swipe left, you can see several pictures of the incident. What I'm bringing to everybody's attention is, first of all and foremost, we're not, we, we not taking this now. So everybody that's out there that loves social media, love, do something creative. Let's find out more about this situation. The police uh-huh. are now filing some type of investigation. They claim they didn't know until they saw it on social media. But we got to make sure they pay attention to this crime. Secondly, listen to me, y'all. This ain't our fight. No. Stay home. You ain't got to go up there and get in the mega rally people face because yes. they trying to bring back 1776. 1776 ain't coming back. The South ain't rising again. We ain't, <laughs> we ain't going back in time to where y'all liked it better. We're not doing none of that. Yeah. Miss mm-hmm. us with that monkey ass mess. But listen to me, black people. This ain't your fight. Let them rally to try to try to get Trump back. We voted. He gone. It's over. We have it's done over. our civic duty. We have done what we were supposed to do legally and the correct way. We have voted. He's gone. We ain't got to go down there and be in their face with the rally. Let them rally by their damn self. They took their stupid ass in that Capitol. Set mm-hmm. in all them chairs. Got their feet up on desks. Writing well, signs. Putting Viking mm-hmm. outfit on. Because him and Giuliano and his damn son, Donald Trump's son, told him to go down there. Mm-hmm. And we're going to yeah. go down there with you. But they did just like they supposed to do. They went to their little house. And now all them people went out there and told the play. Listen, this ain't our war. Our war is at the polls. We did what we were supposed to do as law-abiding citizens. We voted. And look how they treat us. Don't them. get in this mess right here. When you see a mega rally, let them have that rally. Now, let me forewarn you. Don't come down our blocks with your rally. No, right. You don't want to yeah. do that, man. I don't, saw a video don't on social that. media, Steve, and they said, don't come down southeast <laughs> D.C. Yeah. It's going to be a yeah. situation. No, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it's going to be a situation. Rally. <laughs> keep your rally out there in the daylight. Uh, <laughs> I'm just letting you know that now because I know some cats that ain't doing this here. But as far as confronting these people in these rallies, y'all, yeah. that don't worry about that. Let's just go vote. Like Steve, Do not yeah. fall prey to any. Wow. That ain't our war. Yeah. The the war to take our country back. We this they, that ain't what we want. Take our country back. That ain't our war. We want to make America great again. No, we don't. We want America to be better, and yeah, we, we proved do. it by voting. We ain't trying to relive 1776. We don't give a damn no. what they did in 18. Uh, 76 back when they had the last time that they uh, uh, enacted the 25th amendment ain't none of this our war ain't none of this our war don't let them drag you down there and make you victim to this stay home stay out of that we got to deal with this covid crisis stay safe stay safe yeah. Hey man, we ain't, we ain't got to prove nothing to them. They yeah. down there. They Belinda armed. Nebo. Her name is Belinda Nebo. That is the sister. Well, sister. now now we gonna support Belinda uh, Nebo. And if you look at this footage, you all, especially out there at uh, uh, KJLH out there in LA, or anybody mm-hmm. at the beat out there that's listening, I don't care who you are. If you recognize anybody in these photos, and you can submit names, if you got some footage, get it to the police department. Let's support this sister. Let's get behind us. Black people, stay home. Uh-huh. Stay out their way. Mm-hmm. Let let them try to make America great again by their damn self. 
don't, 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 don't worry about what happened in 1776. Ain't nothing happened in 17, 18, 19 been good for us. For Let us. them go <laughs> work that uh, thing. What is it? Damn 17, self. 19. <laughs> All right, Steve. Man, none of well that. said. All right, coming up, uh, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show in 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, guys, Dunny is back on Twitter. That was quick, huh? Trump returned to the site late Thursday with a three-minute video. Uh, he also made the false claim that he immediately sent the National Guard to help to stop the violence. He added that those who storm the Capitol will be prosecuted. Take a listen, please. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence lawlessness, and mayhem. I immediately deployed the National Guard and federal law enforcement to secure the building and expel the intruders. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. Boy, to those who there. engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. Can't well, you tell when somebody you reading? Know, well, Can't you know, tell? man, uh, so he, he's definitely reading, but and he's lying. Mm -hmm. uh, he That's didn't a. immediately call in the, uh, National, <laughs> the National Guard. Guard. Pence no, had not. to do it after he mm -hmm. got ran out of this, uh, the Speaker House. Mm -hmm. uh, sure also, mm -hmm. man, this dude is doing this for one reason and one reason only, because not because remember now. That evening, it was, hey, guys, we need to go home. Go home in peace. We love you. We, love you. we understand how you feel. That's, special. He was talking to those people. You're, You're special. special. Yes. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not over. Uh, that was a speech. When he got that blood on his hand, them four dead people. Five now. And, now five. And, and, yeah. and, then, and then found out that, 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 that it was uh, some Republicans backing up. Now, all of a sudden, y'all fitting to pay. But roll the tape back earlier that day at 12 o'clock when you sent them to the Capitol. Mm -hmm. In your own words, you and Rudy Giuliano. So this, this man right here is really unfit. I, 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 but I've this been saying country. that from the gate. He's unfit oh, yeah. to be president. This he country, is. Man, and is Ivanka, like... his daughter, called them patriots. She tweeted that and then took it down. Oh, he's losing. Yeah. yeah, Patriots. Yeah, because yeah. that's how they really feel about them. Mm -hmm. But since his daddy could, ass could go to jail, now they criminals. Right. Oh, they, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's hey, flipped. Yeah. Hey, storm listen to me, to my storm. listeners. Mm -hmm. Our business is to continue to vote for change. Yes, that's right. right. That's, that's right. right. Now, that's if you right. kill us, we we going back out in the streets to protest. Mm -hmm. But other than that, this mess mm -hmm. they doing about make America great again and get it back to 1776, we ain't got nothing to do with that. Nope. Nothing. Let's nope. just keep nope. voting nope. like we did, and I appreciate you all's power at the polls. Showed up, showed out. All right, coming up, thank you, Steve. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we're going to go to the phones and talk to the people. 877-29-STEVE. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hand it <laughs> all the way you there, walk, <laughs> even the way you talk comes over me. Speaking of talking, let's go to the phones and hear what the people have to oh, say. Eight seven seven twenty nine. Steve. I came in with the wrong tone. Okay, my bad. <laughs> let's go to line four, Steve, and hey, talk to up? Jeffrey hey. out of Cali. Hey, Jeffrey. How you doing? How you doing, man? What's your comment, brother? Hey, bro. I just wanted to correct you on something. You're on point okay. with telling everybody to vote, but they haven't focused in on the key. The key is the Republican senators. We cannot let them get or have or stay in control in the future. You have to vote them out. Remember, eight years of Obama, this president came in and undid it because of the senators. They have the pandemic response team. They, he got rid of that. The Heroes Act is sitting on their desk. They vetoed that. The Stimulus Act, they wouldn't do that. And they impeached them. That's what Congress did. But nothing came of it because of the Republican Senators, they undid everything pretty much Obama did. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. pushed it. They, they're holding us hostage. The Republican senators are holding us hostage. Hey, hey bro, bro, listen to this. I agree with what you're saying. 
Do, do you understand what I was saying, though, that our power and our fight is at the polls with the vote? I'm adding to it. But I want oh, okay. everybody to know that's where you got to focus your votes on. Those Republicans. He said, I got all that. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were, what you told me was you got to correct me. I, 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 but I, but I, that's what Steve meant, voting for you. Yeah. Come on, Jeffrey. We got you. I love yeah, hey, Jeff, I'm, hey, Jeff, I'm with you, man. But you hey, don't you tell Jeff, me you man. got to check yeah. me. You know, I'm still hood now. <laughs> <laughs> For what? So yeah, yeah. we got to pay pay attention no, he's to right. those he's right. to no, those do, down ballots and all of Absolutely. that. When it comes we got to yeah. vote all in all, all elections, every yes. election. But I Thank think you, this Jeffrey. is good for us because we saw that our voting does matter now. Mm-hmm. See, for yeah. years we yeah. thought it didn't matter. What well, we found yeah. out oh. this year, these two elections mm-hmm. proved that our vote not only matter, it counts not only counts, it determines the outcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank you for that, brother. I do appreciate that. (laughs) Yep. Thank you, Jeffrey, from California. All right. uh, Line six, Sheila from Memphis. Hey, Sheila. Hey. Look, I got a question. How y'all doing this morning? Okay, a question. That's interesting. Go ahead. Okay. I I got a question. Everyone is talking about Trump apologized, and he said the people will be prosecuted. But during that speech, Trump made a statement that this is the beginning of our journey. What journey is he talking about? Who is he talking to? He's talking to his base. He's talking to those people who stormed the Capitol. This is just our journey. He actually is trying to plant the seed that he's not done, that he shall return on some level. And that's to keep those donations coming in Mm -hmm. to help him but see, the original donation he asked it for was to help him fight to overturn the election because he needs funds to go out and prove it. Well, people sent in over $200 million to this fund. But if you read the fine line on the fund, it says in the fund he has the right to dispense these uh, funds as he see pleases. At his discretion. Mm-hmm. At his discretion. Hardly any of it was used to fight to fight because they couldn't get the cases. Right. 80 judges turned them down. It's so the only one they had to pay was Giuliano. Giuliani. Well, now he got 200 million. <laughs> and now when he walk away, that 200 million, he get to do what he want to do. But, uh-huh. but what we going to do is tie his ass up in court with that 200 million. He's going to spend all that in the state of New York, Florida, <laughs> DC, <laughs> civil <laughs> terms, he, all, he all these people's right. lives who got yeah. lost. Got mm-hmm. lost because he sent them people down there. The civil suits is coming. So, Ooh. that's right, Sheila. There you go, Sheila. Yeah. Uh-huh. Best way I could Hope answer that answers question. your question, Sheila. That was good. Uh huh. All right, mm-hmm. Steve. I mean, you know, what can we say? On the 20th, he'll be out <laughs> kicking and screaming, whatever, whatever. He'll be gone on the 20th. Yeah. That then, speech he gave yesterday was just to save his own tail. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Yes, Because he know he in a world of trouble now. He sent them people down there. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're moving on. Coming up next, the nephew with the prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it'll be my strawberry letter for today. The subject is, I've been with two, two of her cousins. I've slept with two of her cousins. Uh, But right now, the nephew is here. (laughs) We'll get into the strawberry letter a little later right now. for (laughs) sure. What you got for us, Neff, with the prank phone call? All right, we're going ignorant right now. This right here. 2021 PS5 date. PS5 date. Take a listen. Let's go, Kendra. Hello. Hold on. Hello. Hello. I'm t- Hello. Is this Danielle? Yes. Ho- hold on a second. Listen, I will talk to her. All right. You go back in there. I'll t- let, me- let me talk to the lady. H- excuse right. me. Hello. H- Hello, Hello? Ms. Um, Ms. Danielle. How you doing? This is uh, this uh, is Travis. That? Travis, I'm sorry. Who's Travis? I don't know a Travis. I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize. I'm a, I'm one of your neighbors. I live a couple streets over, and I got your number from um from Rosalind. You you familiar with Rosalind? No, I'm not familiar, with, and I don't know any Travis in my neighborhood either. Okay, I'm I'm a couple streets over. Your son is um is is Wesley. Am I right? 
Okay, yeah, you know a little bit too much. Um, so again, <laughs> how did you get my number? I, I got your number from one of the neighbors. Her name is Rosalind. She told me uh, to reach out and give you a call. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask you about. Um, from my understanding, you were able to get your son one of those PS fives for Christmas. Okay, and you live in the neighborhood too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I live in the neighborhood. I'm just asking you. You were able to get your son one of those PS fives for Christmas. Yeah, my son has a PS five. All right. So okay. listen, I, what do you want? Okay. What I'm trying to do is, is, is like my son, Travis Jr., he wasn't, you know, he wasn't able to get the PS5. We tried and tried to get yeah, the PS5. Yeah, hard but to get. Exactly, exactly. So, I, you know, I was, you know, I, like I said, I know you don't know me, and I'm calling you out to clear blue. You, do you think it's possible my my son, Travis Jr., could maybe play with the PS5 that you guys got until we get him, until I get him one? I don't think so. I, I don't know you or your son. I mean, where does your son go to school? He's out of school right now. How long you guys been in the neighborhood? Uh, we've only been here like about six or seven months. We really just got here. And he's not in school. Is it because of COVID? No, 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 no. He he's um he's 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 finished his third year in um third year of in what? college, and he took some and he took some time off. College? You must be kidding me. College? How old is your son? But, my son is 24, you know, but that's that 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 that, that don't mean nothing though. You know I'm what I'm sorry, saying? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tw say that again. How how old is your son? He's 24. What? Travis Jr. is 24. Are you out of your god mind? Who are you raising over there? Man child? What is this? 24? Well, you the boy the boy has some issues. You think that you have a 24-year-old come to my house that I don't know? That's a grown man. A grown man who wants to play a PlayStation of a 12-year-old in my house at 24. He's problem. 24 years old, but you the boy, got he didn't problems. have... He didn't. You got bigger problems than trying to get a PlayStation. I mean, your son don't have to be there. I just want to let my son play because he ain't been able to play with one. He's been moping around the house and crying about it, you know? So I was trying to figure out if you could help, you know, just could he come over there and play with it, you know, when your son's not playing with it. A 24-year-old? You're trying to find him a PlayStation? Are you kidding me? You got bigger problems. You need to be finding him a job. You need to be finding him a, a, a an apartment. Find him some guy online courses or something to get his ass out of the house to get a job to get an apartment. Okay. Something. A but in, but but until until I get him a job, he can't play play with but, the PlayStation but, 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 till the end. No. Are you out of your mind? He can't play PlayStation until I find him a job. I'm a boy playing the PlayStation. Don't get. That's why I got one. That's why I got one. That's why I worked hard and I got one here on time. That's why. But for my 12 year old, not for a 24 year old. Who needs to have a job and a purpose? Oh my goodness! You're looking for a PlayStation. What kind of father are you? You're looking for a play date. I'm, this is ridiculous for a 24 year old. You must be kidding I'm, I'm, me. I, I, I'm not <laughs> looking for a play this date. Your boy don't even have to be there. I just wanted to be able to go oh, to play oh, with the. Oh, uh, then, oh no 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 no! Now you're going now now you now you're really talking crazy. Get him a job uh, to get an education to get a job to get an apartment to get a life. And then he can buy his own PlayStation. You know what? Lori said you was going to act like this. I'm sorry. What did your sister say? I said, Lori. Ain't your sister Lori? Okay, you know a little bit too much about me. And I ain't never, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about you. Who you who, how do you know okay. my sister? I know your sister, sister Lori because you... I'm going to tell you. I know your sister Lori because she got me to prank phone call you. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Danielle, you've been Danielle. pranked, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No way. She, uh, Lord, no way. Uh, this, uh, only. Mm, 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 mm. You are so wrong. How you All right, baby. this madness? Now it makes sense. It has to be because it's crazy. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Now it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year to you, baby. You got to do one thing for me. Right, right here, 2021. You the first person that's been pranked in 2021. Tell everybody the baddest radio show in the land. Happy New Year to you. And the Steve Harvey <laughs> Morning Show, the baddest radio station in the land. <laughs> <laughs> 
love I just want the boy to play with the PS5. Tell me, let the boy. Tell me, you said he was 24, though. This 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 prank has taken an ugly twist. Right. You know, he been moping around the house, Steve. He going through a few things. What? But Tommy, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> but know. why is he moping? But Tommy, I forgot it was a prank, so I done bought into it. Why is he moping around the house at 24? He needs a job and a purpose. Okay. Well, <laughs> Take some but, online courses. So you need to, but setting up a play yes, date. Yeah. That's what I love. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he didn't have to be there. He though. really got to be there, to yeah, be honest. Have to That's be it. <laughs> Who are you raising over there, man? Yes. <laughs> Oh, Shout man. out to Danielle. She was Big ups fun. to Danielle. Happy. Happy New Year to everybody. Ooh. Catch that nephew tonight. Ready to love. Last resort on OWN. That's 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Hosted by yours truly, the nephew. I oh, can't man. wait. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be good. Be okay, so who hooked? No, nah, you can't tell me, huh, Tommy? Okay, I just got to watch. No, no. Nah, nah, tune in. All right. Is Cal- Calfani still on? Calfani still on. Okay. And my girl, Calfani Winter. I love Winter. Um, yeah, I like Winter. I, like I got like people, Grandmama calling me. Baby, They, I can't wait till Friday. Can you tell me what happened? <laughs> I, it's it's so just good. T- the day Tuesday, baby. Come on now. <laughs> it's really good. It's really, really. Yeah, it's hard to wait. It is. She's right. It is hard to wait, but it's good. Oh, good, man. Oh, good. Hey, you want me to prank somebody? Go to thomasmiles.com. Click on that prank button. Leave me all the information. Let's see what we can get. I'm going to get some great people this year, so y'all tune in. The nephew's going to be stupid all year 2021. I'm going to be stupid. I'm stupid no, Monday no, through no Thursday, no, and no, I got no, sense no. Friday night. See what I'm no, saying? No. That's how I do that. No, no. Monday through, no, actually no. Monday through, huh? I have a correction to make. Uh-oh. What's that? You, you, the statement you just made, you were stupid all through. You're going to be stupid all through 2021. Yeah. You've been stupid <laughs> since 85. 85? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you're his uncle. What, what did he do stupid in 85? I graduated. Well, started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I knew then right there it was hopeless. Uh, hopeless? He started when he was younger, but when he graduated oh, from high school, and I don't know how he got that college degree. Ain't nobody <laughs> see that coming. That's nobody. Theater. Theater, baby. Theater. <laughs> <laughs> Did he always have these people in his head and all of that, Steve? When he was it's just little? been a serious stain on our family. <laughs> Boy, wow. stop that! Stop that! I, I think I've represented the family very well. A lot all of right. shame, Tommy. A lot of Thank shame. Thank you, nephew. <laughs> Coming up next, it is the Strawberry Letter subject. I've been with two of her cousins. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. The strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, I've been with two of her cousins. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 36-year-old man married to the love of my life with four children. Around eight years ago, I left home, moved about four hours away, and that's when I met my wife and we started a family. We were from neighboring cities and knew a few of the same people, so that's how we clicked. She grew up in a close-knit family with lots of cousins, and there's no way I could ever meet her entire family in one visit. Well, we fell on hard times during the pandemic, so my wife suggested we move back to her hometown because Chicago was too expensive. We moved, and I got a great job, and I'm able to take care of my family again. Wifey is happy because she's close to her family again. But I have a big problem. During the holidays, a lot of her family members decided to do a drive-by party for her great-grandmother because it may be her last Christmas. My wife and I drove by the house, and her great-grandmother was sitting on the porch all dressed up, and a female was on the sidewalk taking cards and gifts from people as we drove by. When the female walked up to our car, my heart fell. 
I had met this girl 10 years ago and we messed around for a good while and things ended badly. Well, she's my wife's cousin. By the look on her face, she was shocked too. Later that day, we went to dinner with a few of my wife's relatives and another woman that I used to mess with was there. She's my wife's first cousin and she caught me alone and said she knew I was married to her cousin, but she's moved on and it's cool. My wife doesn't suspect a thing with either woman, but I'm so nervous now. What should I do? Okay, first of all, pull yourself together. Okay, just pull yourself together. You don't have to be this nervous. You didn't do anything wrong. You did nothing wrong. I mean, yeah, it's a crazy, wild coincidence. And what are the chances that you will have dated and slept with two of your wife's cousins? But you didn't know. And you said she had a big family. I'm sure you're not the first one who's ever experienced something like this. I mean, the two variables are the cousins. You don't know what they're going to say or you don't know what they're going to do. But they had their opportunity. They didn't say or do anything. The problem is, yeah, you know, you guys have moved back and your wife will see her family more. So that might be a problem. I mean, you know, the cousin you talked with will be cool. She's moved on. The other one... I don't know, the one where it ended badly, she might be the one you have to have some concerns about. But when she saw you, although she was in shock, she still didn't say anything. So I I just see it as you have two options. You can keep your mouth shut and act like you don't know, uh, you know, know these women like like you did (laughs) for the birthday, the drive-by birthday. Or you can come clean and tell your wife everything. Those are your two options. I know Steve is going to disagree with telling her everything. I know you are. But, I mean, you have the truth on your side. You have the truth on your side because you didn't know truth. anything. and Yeah, he didn't know anything. It's time for that. <laughs> it's always time for the truth. I, I, I think <laughs> it's always time for the truth. I think your wife... I think your wife would rather it come from you if that's what you're concerned about, these two cousins spilling the beans. You know, this is very close to home now. She's with her family and stuff. So, I mean, you know, I in this instance, because it's family and because they might say something, I say tell your wife. That's what I say. Tell her. What? what? Mm-hmm. Hey, man. I know the men turn. are going to agree. It's my turn, Shirley. <laughs> it's my turn. I, I'm gonna. It is now, Steve. Okay, now listen to me. Hey, man, listen to me. Shirley gave a great answer. Don't don't go in here with this to your wife, dog. Do <laughs> not walk this bag of hot ass trouble in there and lay it at your wife's feet. Don't start none. Won't be none. Why in the hell would you go in here and say this? There is no reason to say this. That's the only thing I disagree about Shirley's answer. Other than that, Shirley had a great answer. But don't you take your ass in there to your wife and bring this up. Because what the first thing that's going to do is signal to her that you've been thinking about it. And I'll tell you, the women, why would you go in there and bring it up? You cannot go in there. Because (laughs) Shirley said something. Shirley said... You did nothing wrong. Yeah, and you, did you, not, you didn't. didn't know. And you didn't, dog. Shirley's right about that. I told you, I agree with all the Shirley answers, except go in there and tell your wife. What? If they tell her Go first. in there and tell your wife nothing. <laughs> if they go in there and tell your wife first, your first reaction going to be, that's who that is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? That's her. Let me see her. I don't even remember her. Mm. Oh, yeah. If you say it like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, damn, man. It wasn't even, man, it wasn't even nothing. It wasn't even worth it, man. I, you know, that don't, bro, don't go in there and tell your wife to him. It was ten years ago. It's okay. No, it's not okay. You do <laughs> not go in there with this, boy. Listen to me, sir. Do not go in there and tell your wife this here. Being nervous is okay. I've been scared of a lot of things in my life. Just stay scared. <laughs> All right. <laughs> scared way better than guilty. 
We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Uh, today's Strawberry Letter subject, I've been with two of her cousins. Two of her cousins. And uh, we'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject is, I've been with two of her cousins. Let's well, go. Well, this brother... 36 years old, married to the love of his life. They got four children. Now, eight years ago, uh, he left home Mm -hmm. and moved about four hours away, and that's when he met his wife and started a family. And uh, they were from neighboring cities, and they knew some of the same people, and that's how they clicked. She grew up in a close-knit family, got lots of cousins, so there's no way I could have ever met her entire family in one visit. Well, we fell on some hard times and the pandemic hit, so the wife suggested that we move back to our hometown. He don't say where that is, because Chicago was too expensive. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly (laughs) Hills, that is, swimming pools. Movie star. star. Well, the yeah. next thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. <laughs> the Ken folks said, Jed, okay, move away focus. from there. <laughs> said, this other place is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to see what she could see. <laughs> so they moved down there to his wife's hometown. This is a great Stupid. sitcom. We'll work it off. And uh, the wife is happy because she's close to her family again, but he got a big problem. During the holidays, they decided to do a drive by party for their great grandmama because, you know, it's COVID. Can't go around old ass people, right. cause they eat. They got uh, most of them got pre-existing conditions, so it's a lot of drive-by parties, congratulations, and all that. You know, throw it. You got to throw your uh, gift up on the porch. <laughs> Really crazy. Uh, then really let it so sit out there in the cold for 48 hours before you bring it in. <laughs> so they were driving by, so instead of throwing, because obviously she real old, so she couldn't pick up half the box. It's hard to throw a microwave, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. you got to get an old person a microwave, because the one they had was from 78, and it broke. So, What's wrong with you? <laughs> anyway, uh... They was doing drive-by gifts, and they drove by, and the, your grandmom was sitting on the porch, all dressed up, and a female was on the sidewalk taking cars and gifts right. from people as they drove by. When the woman walked up to our car, his heart dropped because he had met this girl 10 years ago, and they messed around for a good while, and things ended badly. Mm-hmm. Well, she's my wife's cousin, and by the look on her face, she was shocked, too. Well, later that day, they went to dinner, and a few different relatives showed up, and uh, and a woman, another woman that he used to mess with was, was there, too. Mm-hmm. She's my wife's first cousin, and she caught him alone and said she knew I was married to a cousin, but she's moved on, and it's cool. Yeah. My wife don't suspect a thing with either woman, but I'm so nervous now, what should I do? <laughs> Shirley said... Shirley gave a great answer, and then Shirley said, "You should go and tell the wife. Listen to me, boy. Don't walk this. Don't walk your ass in there, and 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 lay this at your wife's feet." Shirley well, we said, "The reason you should that. tell her is because you've done something wrong. That ain't how your wife gonna look at it. How do don't you, know you walk that? your ass in there and say nothing." Uh-uh. Now the one girl that said, "It's cool. She done yeah. moved on, right. Bruh, So why would you bring that up? But the other one, though, it ended badly. She might say something. That's the one you got to worry about. And if she say her. something, then you got to go, who? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what? Man, she, was the one, Squint, she was the one on. taking the gifts to your grandmama. Squint I ain't even pay no call. attention to her. Now, first of all, congratulations, bro, because I got to tell you something. I know. This is you good. done married into a fine-ass family. Man. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Everybody in your family fine. All of you done slept with all the cousins. <laughs> Grandmama sitting up there probably half cute, too. It's just oh, been a, the great-grandmother whose birthday yeah. it is. She's sitting up on the porch. She's still holding. <laughs> so, congratulations, man. You married like into Sarah a beautiful family, and you done had half of them. Now, mm. Dog. So congratulations for that. Yeah. Now, Shirley said you should go and just announce it. Bruh, do not go in there and tell this to this woman. Please. Now, I know you scared. He said, I'm nervous as hell. What should I do? Listen to me, son. You're 36 years old. 
You take that 36 and flip it, and that's how old I am right now, 63. Do Steve. not take your stupid ass in there to this woman <laughs> and bring what? this up. He's Shut love your damn life. mouth. And let's leave it that way. They have a, they have the a one that marriage. ended badly may not open her damn mouth, man. You ain't got time for this right here. Don't say a damn thing. Steve, this but is too shut touchy. The, the wife is seeing the family more now. I don't give closer. a damn what she said. The other girl said it's cool. She done moved yeah, on. We are not worried yeah. about You just had to pray about the one that broke up bad. <laughs> But all this going in here cannot exist. Listen to me. All this going in here because you scared. Scared is way better than guilty. I'm going to say it again. It is better to be scared than guilty. (laughs) Shirley keeps saying you didn't do nothing wrong. So you just going to sleep with everybody in my family? (laughs) You don't think you finna hear this dog? Every time. (laughs) Oh, okay. So what did you see in her? Yeah. So you just going through uh-uh, the family. Uh-uh. And it's then, the DNA. It and then they're going to tell ago. each other, right. and you're going to be this. Well, how many of us yeah. he going to send the grandmama? Yeah. Lord Jesus. <laughs> She's scared. <laughs> he done slept with all these babies. All right, thank you. Thank you, Steve. He just Post running through the Jacksons. On today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Man, Coming up, Junior, with don't Sports Talk show. right Shirley after no man. Don't listen. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, all right, you know what time it is. It is time for Sports Talk with Junior. What you got for us, Junior? Yeah, Shirley, this ain't a good one today. Um, The University of Tennessee at Chattanooga assistant football coach Chris Malone has been fired for a disgusting tweet he posted about our queen, Stacey Abram, after the big win from the senators-elect Reverend Warnock Mm. and John Ossoff. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm just going to tell you, Chris, man, don't say nothing else about Stacey Abrams, okay? Mm. Okay. Just don't even say nothing. (laughs) Yep. Mm-hmm. And, Tell and, them, and you know, and the the statement was so disgusting. I yeah. I don't even want to know if I want to repeat it. No, we're not. No, we're not. Yeah. Okay, but, I'm not but, even no. gonna do. This. Okay, okay, but can we put line. this statement? Let me explain something to you. The way we feel about our sister Stacey A. That's right. our queen. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. as a black man. Mm-hmm. See, I, let let me tell you something, man. We have to defend our sisters. Yes, we have to do a better yeah. job than we've been doing. Mm-hmm. Stop letting these people talk about our women like this. It would be better if we start we stop talking about them. But let's mm-hmm. you really can't say nothing about our right. queens no more. Mm-hmm. Now, no. unless you want your ass whooped. <laughs> and I was going to ask you this. I mean, when we going to get back to yeah. whooping people ass? Well, <laughs> see, right now they're whooping each other ass, so we got to let that play out. <laughs> <laughs> no, they climb the walls and, fight. you know, fight. busting out yeah. windows at the Capitol, you know, mm-hmm. wearing Viking suits. They ask to go to jail right now. We need to let all this play out. But listen, man, in your loss of the presidency, don't don't come for our queen, Stacey Adams, who's done Abrams. so much. Abrams. 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 Your tweet was so ignorant. It was vile. It's so ignorant that it has cost you your livelihood. Right. And, bro, where you finna go to get hired again? Because, see, social media got you everywhere. So what coaching program you fit to go that ain't got no black kids on the football team? Right. You mm. just got canceled. Who is you fit to play for? The Montana Marshmallows? Because <laughs> that's all that's <laughs> the out who? there. The Montana who? Marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're a little league team. Yeah, and that's a fantasy football at best. <laughs> if you get into football and you don't have black people, we're not really talking – you can't be talking Division One, Division no, Three, none no of that. You can't no, no, no. So where are you going? See, man, this comment has cost you your livelihood, yes. and good for you, man. Yes. I don't know what's wrong with these people, but Stacey Abrams is off limits. Yes, Period. Yes, she I'm, is. I'm claiming Stacey Abrams as Steve Harvey's little sister. Oh, Keep okay. your hands off my little sister. I ain't yes. having it. If right. I hear you talking Steve about like any one of Steve. my little sisters, Uncle Steve coming for that ass. <laughs> yes. Because we tired of you. Hello. With your racist ass. Cat at me somewhere right. else. We'll, we'll be, be back. back. Uh, we're going to take Steve some calls. 877-29-STEVE. 877-29-STEVE after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We're back. Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
<laughs> had some yeah. interesting conversation off air. Um, but we're going to go to the phone, Steve, because we have people waiting to talk Let's to go. us. Let's go to line one and talk to Terry out of Beaumont, Texas. Hey, oh, Terry. Oh my, baby. Mm-hmm. Good morning. Good morning. The number one morning show in the Golden Triangle. In the How world. How are you yeah. guys doing? Beautiful. What's on your mind, Terry? Well, I just want to tell you, you all have done an awesome job with the voting, and everyone needs to just stay focused and just vote. Uh, your, your vote is your voice, and uh, that's what we need to do is vote, and I want to tell you all how hilarious you are and enjoy you, Steve. You have done so much for my mom during this pandemic with the other arenas that you work in. Thank you for that. And let everybody know that laughter is good for the soul. Yes, it is. You got to keep balancing your life. And Miss Strawberry, did you all know you all have a commercial here in the Golden uh, Triangle? So I get to see who I knew all, everyone else. Except you, Miss Strawberry. You ain't got paid for no commercial. I, what commercial is this here, baby? That it's uh, just a commercial, about? Tommy. You're not gonna get paid for it. Okay. Anybody <laughs> see no commercial? Man. Well, let's all check into that. Yes, thank you, Terry, for letting us know. We appreciate you too. Thank you. You and Mama. Beaumont Port Arthur in Orange, Texas. Uh huh. Gold. We need to try somebody in Port Arthur, Orange, or Beaumont to find out about this. Shut up, Tommy. No, no, they done ran this commercial all up and down I 10. We need to find out what's going on. Next phone call, Shirley. Next phone call. Let's go to line two and talk to Kim out of Jacksonville. Hey, Kim. Duval. Mm -hmm. Good good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, What's on your mind, Kim? Yeah, what I wanted to talk about, Steve, is first, I seen you in person. I got the privilege of seeing you in person when you was in Orlando. And I also got this privilege to see... Uh, nephew Tommy when he came to Jacksonville and Jay Anthony Brown when they came to Jacksonville in the comedy club. My son oh, is okay. just left for the bus and he told me to tell you. He said hello. He will be in your camp when he gets old enough. But okay. I wanted to stress to y'all about the concerns about what happened in the Capitol because as a 10-year-old man, young man, she asked me, so mom, what's going to happen? He said, because you always told me how if I'm with friends and we do something wrong, we all going to get in trouble. And God forbid someone gets hurt or die, we all get in trouble for that. So how come the president is not getting in trouble for what he did? And now another police officer died this morning at 530. That police officer died. Yeah. Well, tell yeah, your baby you know. what mm-hmm. I've had to tell my sons and what my father has had to tell me. Uh, the reason the president ain't in trouble, well, technically, is because he's president and you can't indict a sitting president. But wipe all that away. The reason those people were allowed to storm the Capitol and nothing happened to the majority of them is because the thing that's called white privilege is real. Yes. It is very real. And it's a very much a double standard in how we are handled by the police departments nationwide. Once again, All police officers are not this way, but there are enough of them who are, who make it very bad for not the most of us, but all of us. Mm -hmm. So continue to tell your son to be watchful, to understand that there is still a difference in this world. And as much as we would like for it to change, it's not moving right now. So stay watchful, keep teaching your son the things that you've talked to. He has every right to question it, but our, our power is in what you said. It is in the vote. And what black people and brown people did this election, along with whites, was we proved that our vote counts, our vote matters, and black lives matter. Because we matter so much now that we change outcomes of elections. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Terry, for your phone calls. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at about 20 minutes right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Very special announcement. Tomorrow, guys, we are celebrating what you ask. Well, first of all, I got to say happy birthday to my husband, Ernesto. It is his birthday tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Ernesto. (laughs) Happy birthday. Ness, Ness, baby. What's up, doggy? And uh, it's li- our li- anniversary tomorrow. Oh, happy, happy anniversary, anniversary. Shirley. How many years? Yeah, happy, happy anniversary. Yeah. Happy birthday, Nestor. 
Six. And let me jump in here mm -hmm. and wish my wife a happy birthday tomorrow as well. Yeah. Right. January 9th. Jackie. Happy Jackie. Jack. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm just so happy that I made it. I can't, I'm, can't, I still can't believe Six you years. Made it. Wow. Six years. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You say years. that publicly, huh, Shirley? Publicly. On the weekend yeah. of the anniversary. <laughs> six I think years. that's cool. I just think it's cool. Sure. I made six, it six years, years. two cooked yeah. meals. I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> so Shirley, what do you do? You, you do you buy some for Christmas, and then of course you have. So you got to buy two things. You got uh -huh, anniversary uh -huh. and a birthday. Close, close together, yeah. But it's more about what, not so much what I buy, what he buys. As far as I'm concerned, facts. You got to get the man something. It's his birthday. I'm going to. I know. Yeah, I'm but the birthday to. is on the anniversary, Tommy. You know what you uh, should get so. him, Shirley? What? One of those places that deliver meals for the week, so that man can eat something. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday. And happy birthday. And we'll to be Jackie right back, y'all, with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, I'm going to start this story this way. We have asked you to be quiet, to get somewhere and sit down. We have Who are you asked talking about, me? This. No, not you. I'm talking Ooh. about OJ. Okay, OJ Simpson. He's what speaking out again. Now? He's, he's speaking out again. Yesterday, he spoke about the domestic terrorist attack on the Capitol. Take a listen. You know, I've been in the legal system, and I've had verdict that I didn't agree with. But I believe in the American system. I believe in the jury system. So I felt I had to honor it, and I tried to honor it as best as I, I could, and then move on. And I can't believe that we have people who are trusted in really uh, making the jury system, working in the jury system that is not honoring the jury system, not honoring the decisions of some of our federal judges. And that, I don't know, that makes me sad. Um, can, hold on, hold on one second. Uh, Before anybody say anything, let, let, me, let me just go back with OJ for a second here. Go ahead. I've been writing jokes about OJ since 90, early 90s. Uh huh. So I'm very familiar. Um, okay. mm -hmm. When you say that you've been in the legal system and you've had some <laughs> verdicts like passed down that, that you didn't agree with, which which one are you talking about? Because <laughs> the first verdict that was <laughs> the criminal freed system. you from not murdering uh -huh. two people that was not yeah. guilty. That that's one. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you had trouble with that one, but let's just work <laughs> past that. The second one mm -hmm. that you could have probably had a problem with was. When they convicted you, when you went in there with them four other 50-year-old fools mm -hmm. with a gun to get mm -hmm. your Heisman yeah. back. Right. <laughs> and yeah. then y'all held them people at gunpoint, kidnapping, and all this here, assault charges. That one right there. After you got free from the... So which, which one of these verdicts <clears throat> was you having the most trouble with? <laughs> So, what's your, what's your think, point? You want him to sit this one out? That, that he, yeah, yeah, this I'm ain't the advice out. we want. Yeah, yeah. Right. He sit down. down. Why is he discussing anything judicial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have asked him over the years, yeah, O.J. Steve. Simpson. Yeah. If you got some yeah. ideas about football, we up for listening. You know, Not we even that. Not uh, even that. Yeah. No. Uh, but, uh, you know, at least we in his lane. Yeah. He could play some yeah. damn football. <laughs> you familiar oh. with the judicial system? That's because it was a guilty. <laughs> it was a guilty verdict. That's why. <laughs> when it's guilty, you gotta go. Why is he talking? He oh. craves the spotlight. I guess. I, I guess yeah. he does. You know. It might be true. Yeah. Sir. It makes okay. me sad. He just likes the attention. Sad. He likes makes that. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the last break of the day. That's coming up at 49 minutes after the hour. Please join us for that, as well as some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are. Last break of the day, last break of the week of this very, very, very crazy historic yeah. Deadly week. A I mean, week this is just awful. Awful. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's a lot. My closing remarks uh, today are uh, a combination of things. First of all, 
the utter pride that I feel uh, in the turnout, turnout that our community displayed in the election overall, and then the utter and sheer pride that I felt in the senatorial runoff election between uh, that put uh, Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff into the Senate. Um, a lot of people voted, but I'm, I'm talking about a particular voting block. I'm talking about the voting block that has been so uh, ignored for hundreds of years. I'm talking about the voting block that has had every attempt to oppress that vote that you can think of. No one has been denied, prevented, oppressed the vote more than black people. No one. No one. We have suffered for years with this. And we overcame it all. And this year was the proudest year of my life as a voter. This was my proudest year of my life as a radio personality for my morning show, for all of us on the morning show, who realized that our efforts made an impact. And we encouraged and implored and pleaded with people and and gave reasoning and did all of the important interviews to get people to vote. So we've done that. And in that, we have taught ourselves that our vote does matter. We had to prove it to ourselves, though, because, look, so many things have happened to us in this country for over 400 years that we, 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 I, I can understand the feeling that it don't matter. But it had to one day bear out the way it has, that it does matter. We had to become living proof for ourselves that our vote matters. Now, a lot of this happened because of the pandemic. Because in the death of George Floyd, Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, so many others, the world was sitting still for the first time and saw what we had been seeing for years without the uh, addition of social media. So we sat here and watched, America watched what we had been watching from our porches and apartment windows and homes for years. They got a chance to see how police really treat us. And then the athletes, the entertainers, the grassroots people, the teachers, uh, everybody got behind this Black Lives Movement. These young people that came out here for Black Lives Movement really, really mattered. And then we found out that they wanted to tell us that our lives really don't matter, that it's blue lives that matter, that it's white lives that matter, that it's everybody else's lives matter but ours. When they never even heard the original message and what it was, was we're not saying our lives matter more. We just wanted them to matter like everybody else's life. But you refused to give us that. So then everybody band together. Colin Kaepernick was right when he kneeled and you reversed that. You've tried to hijack every cause we've had. And the president of the United States standing up saying that this is a Marxist organization and that it's from communist roots. We ain't even got time for that. We got our own problems. We proved them all wrong. We voted. And we proved that not only do black lives matter, our vote matters. And we now determine who sits in office. And we will continue to matter. And we're going to matter even more and more, the black and brown vote. And now one last thing before I go. I want us as black men to take better care of our black women. Let's come to the rescue of our sisters more critically. Uh, uh, Stacey Abrams is under attack from this coach in Tennessee. Uncle Steve not having it. I'm asking all other men to stand up and start fighting for our queens. We're not going to let you destroy our queens anymore. So she's off limits, sir, from now on. And open up your mouth about her again, okay? Open up your mouth about her again. Let's get back to whooping ass. Let's get back to it. It's more effective. Just saying. <laughs> It really is. Walked away from it. This is what it back to. That's all I'm saying. You better understand. Won't you come? Won't you come? <laughs> Why don't you come? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, Kat, you told me it was over with. <laughs> Thank uh, you for listening. We appreciate the love. They, she is off limits, though. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we're not saying what's going to happen, but we're not going to let you do <laughs> oh, no, that. Oh, no, you understand? Yeah. No, I'm understand. just saying it. No, that ain't what we're doing. We're voting now. Yeah. We're voting now. Oh, man. We can't vote and whoop people ass. Why we can't do both? <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong Come with out the booth and start swinging. It's easy. <sighs> Uncle, you change. You know that? <laughs> you go to Dubai, you come back. You're not going to be in uh, closing remarks next week. <laughs> <laughs> promise you that. I wasn't trying to be in it this That's all right. We're going to have your mic off next week. <laughs> and Kat, you're going to learn how to count next week, too. <laughs> it's our first week, huh? <laughs> I don't give a damn. <laughs> it was a I good first week here. back. How about hey, that? Man. Now we got 10 seconds. I'll be down. <laughs> Go Cleveland. <laughs> Come on, Cleveland. <laughs> Please. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 